OK, let's, let's go on. All right. Now, we were talking about transport layer the other day. Right? So we saw that uh, basically transport layer ensures that the packet gets delivered from process to process, end to end delivery. Right? From one process on one host to another process on another host. And there are two types of services. We saw that the connection, connectionless and also the connection oriented. Right? The first one is quite very simple. It does not give much feedback, no flow control. The second one, the connection oriented is more sophisticated. Of course, it requires a little bit slightly more complicated, but it gives a good reliable service. Right? So now we're going to take a look at some of the common uh, transport layer protocols right, which are being implemented. So these are the four plus one, five, which we'll look at. The first four are basically one directional, unidirectional, meaning that they only work in one way, right? normally between a client and a server, one side. The, sec the second one, the bidirectional, means you work both ways. Right? You, can, you can send and receive at the same time using the same protocol. This is only no normally for sending, right? one way only. OK, so the first one, the simple protocol, as the name suggests, is very, very simple. Right? It does not do much. It just gets the data from the, uh, from the application, and then it just sends it out. Right? So it's connectionless. You remember connectionless means that it does not, it just takes the data from the, from the higher layers, application layer, the transport layer on the client, which basically output the data onto the line and then sends it out without any, without any uh, control. It does not check whether the, the server is, whether the client is ready on the other side. No flow control, it does not check for errors, does not wait for acknowledgement, nothing. Right? Just send it out. So no flow control, no error control. The, on, on the sender side, the application layer will pass the data to transport layer. Transport layer, transport layer will basically break up the data into small blocks and then sends it out. That's it. Nothing else. Right? That's, that's simple protocol. So if you put it in a diagram, right, the, the process will pass the data to the, to the transport layer. Transport layer will just output the packet and send it. And send it. Right? Whether the packet arrived there safely, we do not know. Whether it arrived or not, nobody knows. We don't check. Whether you are sending data too fast, we don't care. Right? Whether the, the server whether the server is ready to receive, we don't care. Right? We just send out the data. But that's very simple. Right? So the, the, the mechanism of it is very, very simple to implement. So the second one is just to, to make it slightly uh, more uh, slightly better, more reliable, is that we send one packet at a time. Right? So the transport layer will send one, one packet of data and then We'll wait for some kind of feedback from the other side, from the receiver, before sending the next packet of data, right? To make sure that the first packet has arrived correctly, has been received correctly, right? So send one packet, wait for acknowledgement. So in this case, the sliding window is one. Remember the sliding window, right? So we have see which 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 is the currently which is the current packet we want to send, and then we send it, and then we wait. Until acknowledgement, acknowledgement arrives, then only we send the next one. Okay? So this is connection oriented with flow and error control. Right? So basically you send packet and then you will wait for acknowledgement to come, then only send the next packet and then wait for acknowledgement send, and then send the remaining packet one by one. Okay? And the sender will use a timer. Right? So before when you start the packet, send a packet, it will, it will start a timer and then see whether you get acknowledgement within the timer. Because let's say you send a packet and then no acknowledgement arrives. So how long does the, does the client supposed to, how long does the, how long the sender is supposed to wait for the acknowledge, acknowledgement to, to arrive, right? Maybe the acknowledgement will not arrive or take too late or whatever it is. So you cannot wait for indefinitely. So there's a, there's a timer. After sending the data, you start a timer, 
and make sure you, you wait for a certain, num certain amount of time for the acknowledge acknowledgement to arrive. If the acknowledgement does not arrive within the time, within a certain time period, it assumes that a packet was lost. And then it will resend the same packet. And then start the timer again and wait for acknowledgement. Right? So that's what it does. If no, like, no acknowledgement received, before time expires, then it assumes the packet is lost, and then it is automatically resent. Right? And in order to in order to uh, facilitate the sending of packets and the acknowledgement, uh, this particular protocol uses sequence numbers by the sender for the packets, and the receiver will use acknowledgement numbers to indicate which packet has been received and which has been not. Right? So in this case, normally we use only two bits, zeros and ones. Right? So we use modulo two. Sequence numbers will be used for the next pack packet expected. Right? We will see the example here. Right? So our sliding window is one on the sender side. That means we only send one packet at a time. And which packet do we send? It will depend where the sliding window is. Right? Which one it shows. That is the packet you sent. You sent and then you, you will not move the window until the acknowledgement arrives. Right? Acknowledgement arrives, then you can you know this packet has been correctly received. Now you can move your window to the next packet to be sent. Right? The receiver side, same thing also. It only expecting one, one packet to arrive and then it will acknowledge one packet. So also the receiver window is also size one. Right? So the packet sending will have a sequence number. Acknowledgement received will have a acknowledgement number here. Right? And they are using two different lines, meaning that one particular tunnel or line is used for sending packets. Another line is used to reverse to see the uh, to, to receive the acknowledgements. So two different packets are used, one for sending sending data, one for sending acknowledgement. Right? We do not mix them up. So there are two different channels you call them or two different packet structures. Right, so this is the sequence for this particular protocol. So take a look here. This is our sequence of packets which we want to send. So since our sequence number is all modular two, we only use one bit. So zero one zero one zero one. So we're going to we're going to label the packets zero one zero one, alternate between zeros and ones. Right. So the first we are ready to send the first packet, which is packet zero. Right. And our window only shows one packet. All right. So the sender sends the packet 0, which is shown by the sliding window, sends it, and then the receiver will be waiting here. So once the receiver receives packet 0, if packet 0 has been received correctly, it will move its window and say that now the receiver is ready to receive the next packet, which is packet number 1. And the acknowledgement sent will be acknowledgement 1, indicating to the sender that now please send packet 1. So the acknowledgement number indicates to the sender what is the, pack, what is the next packet number the sender should send. Right? So now the sender rec receives the acknowledgement 1, so he knows that my next packet is 1, so therefore I'm ready to, uh, that means the receiver is ready to receive packet number 1, so I can assume that packet number 0 has been correctly received. So therefore, the sender will shift or move its sliding window to the next position, right? To to the packet tray number one. So now it sends packet number one. Right? When sending it, it will start a timer. So if the acknowledgement arrives within the timer, then it's okay. In second case, now the packet sends packet number one, but somehow the packet got lost. It was never received by the the other side. So no acknowledgement. So the sender starts the timer and then wait, 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 wait until the timer expires. No acknowledgement has been received. Right? So what the sender will do, it will resend the packet which is shown, which is currently shown in its sliding window, which is packet one. So packet one was sent earlier. Timer expires means that the same packet has not been acknowledged, so I resend the same packet. Right, from the sliding window. And this time, 
All right? The packet has been received. It was expecting packet number one, and it gets packet number one. Therefore, the sliding window for the receiver will shift one position, and, and it will send acknowledgement. Say acknowledgement zero means that next packet to be sent by the sender will be packet number zero, the next one. Right? So the number, sequence number alternates between zero and one. Right, third scenario, now we send a, the sender sends the next packet, packet number zero. It is received by the receiver, acknowledge, but somehow the acknowledgement got lost. Right, so the acknowledgement, acknowledgement was not received. So again, the timer on the sender will expire because it did not receive acknowledgement. Then in this case, it will resend the same packet again. Packet number zero is sent. Now what happens is that the receiver is expecting packet number one, right? Because the sliding window shows one. But the packet which arrives is packet zero. Then what it will do, it will just ignore. That packet is discarded and then it will, it will reply again, saying, I'm expecting packet number one. So send acknowledgement one. Right? So once it becomes this, then the sender will know, oh yes, okay, now I, I got the acknowledgement, I can, I can shift, the, shift the, the sliding window position to the next one to the right. I shift one to the right. Okay? So basically you send a packet, you wait for acknowledgement, and the acknowledgement arrives, then you shift your sliding window for the next packet to be sent. All right? So the main thing this is that you cannot send more than one packet at a time. You send one packet, you have to wait for reply. Send one packet, wait for reply. Right? So it is not very uh, economical in that sense because a lot of time is wasted waiting for the acknowledgements to arrive. Right? So the third one, so this particular go back end protocol tries to improve on this situation whereby it will send acknowledgement one acknowledgement, one acknowledgement is sent for multiple packets. That means the sender is free to send a few packets at the same time and the receiver will reply one acknowledgement for a multiple packets received. All right? This was what he meant by go back end. So the acknowledgement number is cumulative. Is, is cumulative means that, for example, if, 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 if the acknowledgement number Acknowledgement 7 is sent, it means that all packets with a sequence number before 7 up to 6 has been received correctly, and the receiver is expecting the next packet to be packet number 7. Right? So that whatever packets have been sent earlier, I have received all. I'm going to say, send me packet number 7. So now the sender can assume that any packet sent before packet 7 has been correctly received. Right? So one single acknowledgement for multiple packets sent. Right, so we save time on this sense. So the send window can slide multiple slots when acknowledgement received. Right, so this is what we're going to do. So in this case, our send window will be bigger now. It will be have multiple slots we can, because we can send multiple packets at the same time. Right, but the receive window will still be one because we're going to reply only one acknowledgement. Right, so our Sliding window will have, will have multiple slots and it will be differentiated between which packet has been sent out and not acknowledged and sent out and acknowledged. Right? So we can say the blue one is that, oh sorry, so first, this is the first packet which, is, which we, we sent out, right? the SF, first packet which we have sent out and then we are waiting for acknowledgement, the blue one. And these are empty slots, which we can send new packets until the sliding window is full, right? Okay, let's take, so this, so this, is, what I, this is what I explained here. So in this case, the send window size is eight here, uh, sorry, seven. So means packet number zero, SF until SN, 0, 1, 2, 3 are the packets which we have sent out but not acknowledged yet. And 4, 5, 6 is the one which we can send. We can still send to the receiver because our sliding window allows it. 
These packets cannot be sent yet because there's no space in the sliding window. Sliding window has not reached here yet, so this one hold on. The one on the left hand side, this packet has been already been finished, completed. We have sent them and we have acknowledged we have received acknowledgement for it. So they are out of the sliding window. Alright, so the sliding window will move towards the right. Okay? So the sliding window, so acknowledgement number which is sent by the receiver must be between these two, these two figures, between SF and SN. Meaning that because these are the packets which we sent out earlier by the sender, so the acknowledgement received must be one of these. It cannot be something here, right? Then it's wrong. Because we send out packets four, five, six, seven, the receiver is supposed to reply with one number, one acknowledgement number with one of these. Right, so for in this case, right, it must be visible down here. It's visible on my machine. Right, so in the bottom part, so we have now, let's say this is what the situation, four, five, six, seven are the packets which have been sent out. Now, we receive acknowledgement with number six. Acknowledgement six has been received. What it means is that all packets until packet number six Packet number, all packets until packet number 5 has been received correctly. And the next packet to be sent, or sorry, or the next packet to be received by the receiver is packet number 6. Right? So now, the sender will know that ah, acknowledgement number 6 means anything before 6 is okay, done with it. It's confirmed received. So I can, I can move my sliding window two positions to the right. Right, I can move my sliding window to make sure that the, be the beginning of the sliding window corresponds with the acknowledgement number. So acknowledgement number six, I move my sliding window until it reaches here. Right, because any, all the packets before number six has been received correctly. That's what it means. So now what we're doing is that we're acknowledging multiple packets at the same time. Right, so this one number acknowledges two packets has, which has been sent out earlier. So a sliding window can jump or can shift two positions at the same time. Right, so the shift, so sliding window will slide according to the acknowledgement received. Right? The sliding on the, on the receiver side, the sliding window is only, only one, right? Because it's only going to reply one position. So it slides one, one slot at a time. So these are the packets currently, so the, one, the, the number which is showing in the sliding window is the packet to be expected next. It's waiting for packet number five. That's what it's showing in the sliding window. Right? The packets on the left-hand side of the sliding window has already been received and has been sent acknowledgement. So this is the past. And packets on the, numbers on the right means that these packets cannot be received yet. Right? because we are expecting packet number six, five. So we cannot expect this to come yet. And that's what it means. So the size is equal to one. All right, so let's see the sequence of operation for this particular protocol. So in this case, our, our window size on the sender is seven, and window size on the receiver is one. All right, so so we start at the beginning, our, our window, uh, sliding window is positioned at the beginning, so there is a, we can send out at the maximum of seven packets at the same time, right? Because the, the sliding window size is seven. So from packet zero to six, we can send, right? So what do we do? So the sender sends packet zero, right? So the color change to, to become uh, light blue, right? So packet zero is sent. On the receiver side, it's expecting packet zero to come. So the moment it receives packet one, it receives packet one, it will reply, it will, it will shift its, its sliding window to the next one and say that, okay, I've, and then it, uh, it received packet zero correctly, so you can shift sliding window to right by one position and then reply with acknowledgement one, meaning that next packet to be expected is packet number one. Right? So now, if the, if the acknowledgement from the receiver is received within, within, the, within the timer, now 
So packet zero has been acknowledged because we are, we are expecting packet number one now. Anything? All packets before packet one, all packets before packet number one has been received correctly. Right? So we only send zero anyway, so no problem. So zero is acknowledged. So we can shift our sliding window one position to the right. Okay? So in this case, you only, you only send one packet and it, ignore, it got acknowledgement. Right? After that, it sends packet number one. The sender sends packet number one. And then immediately it sends next packet in the sliding window, packet number two. And it sends packet number three, right? Because it's free to send multiple packets at the same time as long as the packets are in the sliding window, right? So in this case, it sends three packets quickly, very, very fast, one, two, three, without waiting for acknowledgement, all right? So now the receiver is expecting packet number one, okay? Packet number one arrives. It it uh, shifts its uh, sliding window to, to, to the next position and then replies acknowledgement two. Right? Somehow, that acknowledgement two did not, did, it got lost and did not arrive at the sender. Okay? Fine. After that, but, but the receiver did not know it, it, this, this, the, the acknowledgement has been lost. All right? Packet two arrives. Packet two arrives. Receiver is expecting packet number two. Fine. It is in a correct sequence, okay? I reply acknowledgement three and I shift my position to three because it is, a, it, it is the right packet I'm expecting. And then packet number three arrives. Yes, I'm expecting packet number three. Fine, acknowledge it and say acknowledgement four, right? Now, packet, now acknowledgement two did not, did not got lost. So when uh, the sender receives acknowledgement number three, it will What happened? Something is wrong here. Um, ah, okay, yes. All right, okay. So, when you see acknowledgement two was lost, when, when the sender receives acknowledgement three, it means that all packets up to, or all packets before packet three has been received correctly. Right, that's the understanding, remember? So that means whatever packets are before three in the sliding window can be assumed to be received correctly by the receiver. So, this, so it's packet number one and two. Although it did not receive acknowledgement from two, but because this is cumulative, right? So one single acknowledgement acknowledges the receipt of the all previous packets received, right? So in this case, once you receive acknowledgement three, it means that packet number one and two has been received correctly. So therefore, it can move its sliding window two positions to the right. After that, once, arrive, once the acknowledgement for packet four arrives, means that all packets up to packet three has been received correctly. And we are sending packet three just now. Then the sliding window will shift one position to the right at the beginning of packet number. All right? That's how it works. Got this is, so the acknowledgement here is acknowledgement for all the, all the packets received before that. Right? One single acknowledgement for multiple packets received. So, so in this case, if acknowledgement got lost along the way, no big problem. Not a big problem. Right? Because the next, the subsequent acknowledgements will be able to handle that, right? So there is, for a sender point of view, no problem, right? So this is what happens. Now, a slight variation. In this case, okay, again, same thing. We send packet number zero. It was acknowledged, okay, fine. We shift position. Now we send packet number one. Now the packet got lost, right? We send packet number, quickly, packet one, two, three, right? Packet one goes lost. Now, packet two was sent. When packet two arrives on the receiver, what happens? Receiver is expecting packet number one to, to be the next, in, next to be received, right? Then, but packet number two arrives. 
Packet number two arrives. So this, this, this one does not match with this. What the receiver do is that it will discard the packet. And then it will send again, again the reminder, say acknowledge one. Means that this is the packet I'm expecting. Right? So once, once this acknowledgement arrives, OK, so this so you arrive here. And when packet number three arrives, it will also be compared with the current position of a sliding window. It's not the same. This packet also also discarded. And, and same acknowledgement packet will be sent to the sender. right? So in this case now, what is saying that packet number? So, it's, so for packet number one only, it has received the acknowledgement. That means pack, any packet is before number one, which is zero. But for packet number one, and one, two, three, it sends, none of them has been acknowledged yet. Right? So the timer was started, and the timer expires now. So once the timer expires, and none of the packets in the, in the sliding window which we sent out earlier were, were acknowledged, therefore it will start resending the packets again from the beginning of the sliding window. Right? Because the, the, the receiver says, keeps reminding, send me one, send me packet one, send me packet one. Right? So the sender will now go to, to the beginning and then after time expires and then resend packet one. So if the packet one is sent, this time it, it does not get lost, then the receiver will compare packet one arrives, it's expecting packet number one, okay fine, now I can, receiver can, can shift its uh, sliding window, one position to the right and then set acknowledgement two, saying that okay, I'm expecting packet number two now. So again, the sender sends again packet number one, two and three all together. Again, one, one more time, one th because none of them were acknowledged earlier in the previous, previous session. So it was acknowledged here, two, then packet, when packet two arrives, it says packet, packet number two, so we acknowledge when three is sent, when packet number three arrives, it's, it's correct, and then acknowledgement four is sent. Right? So as the acknowledgements are received, the sliding window on the, rece on the, on the sender side is shifted one by one. Right? And number two means packet number one has been received, so we can shift the window. Packet, uh, acknowledgement three means packet number two has been acknowledged, so we can shift the sliding window to the right. And uh, when acknowledgement four comes, means packet three also has been received correctly. Right? So all three packets has been acknowledged. Right? So in this case, what it, what, it, what it shows that go back end is quite robust in that sense. If packets get lost or acknowledgements got, get lost, there is a way to handle them. Right? You, don't, you don't waste too much, too much time on it. All right. So next question is that how big should be the sliding window? Right? So in this case, the earlier case, we use it is 7. Right? The window size is 7. So the question is, what is the ideal size? So here there is some kind of uh, guidelines to say that what should be the ideal size for the slide, send, sliding window for the sender. For receiver, it's always 1. That one, no issue. Right? So the recommended one is that the sliding window size should be less than the maximum sequence number. Right? So maximum sequence number is the sequence number we use. So if, uh, if our, we use two bits to represent sequence numbers, right? right? So 2 power m is 4 minus 1, that means 3. So our window size should be ideally be 3. Right? So if we use two bits, means our, our packets, packets will be numbered 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. Right? Two bits are used. Then our, pack, our window size should be 2m minus 1. Right? It should be 3. Right? So this, this is the reason, this is the justification for it. Look at it this way. So we have pack, three packets, our window size is 3. We can, we, we can send three packets. So send packet number 0. Let's say this scenario, packet, send packet number 0. It is received. The sliding window on the receiver ships one side. Acknowledgement 1 is sent. But the acknowledgement was lost, right? And then sender is sends quickly packet zero, one, two, three. Uh, sorry, packet zero, one, and two. 
until this, all the packets in the sliding window has been sent out in sequence. Right? But somehow, all three acknowledgments were lost, were not received by the sender. So after a time, time out, since no acknowledgments were received for packet number zero, so the sender will retransmit packet number zero, right? And the receiver is what? Expecting packet number three now, right? And if the, if the sender sends packet number zero again, resend, so this is incorrect. Because packet number zero has been received, so it will be discarded, which is correct. Because the packet was received correctly, right? But compare this with this now. Let's say our, our window size is 2, by 2 power m, which is 4 now. Right? So now we increase the window size on the sender side. Same thing, we send our window size is 4 now. We can send 4 packets in sequence, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, quickly. And then, again, same scenario, all the acknowledgments were lost. Right? But the packets were received. So as the packets were received, the sliding window on the receiver will be shifted one right. right. So at the end, we are expecting next to be packet number zero. Right? Now, since the sender did not receive any acknowledgement, it will start sending again packet number zero. Correct? And, and the receiver is expecting packet number zero, but the packet number zero is expecting is a different one. It's supposed to be this. Not this one. This has been received earlier. Right? So the packet, when packet number zero is resent again by the sender, the receiver mistakenly take, thinks that this is a packet which is expecting in the, in the next sequence, right? which is wrong. It accepts it because it corresponds with the sliding window position. But it is not the right, it is not the right uh, packet because the, the same packet is being sent again by the sender and the receiver now is, is incorrectly accepting a duplicate packet. Right? So transport layer, remember, is supposed to eliminate du du duplicate packets. So sliding window is one, one, of, one, of, one of the techniques used to overcome duplicate packets. Right? So anyway, so the justification is that the window size should be one less than the maximum number of bits used for the for the, for the sequencing of the sending out packets, right? Right. Now, earlier is that if one packet got lost, right? Earlier, one, one packet got lost, when we asked the, set, the receiver, what happens is that it will send back uh, uh, acknowledgement. The acknowledgement means that send me the packets, the acknowledgement basically acknowledges the packets before that, right? the sequence before that. So if one of the packets were lost in between, it has to resend the whole bunch again. Right? That was the problem with the go back end. Right? So the selective repeat protocol allows only to resend only the packet which was actually lost and not the whole sequence. It means that if you send packet one, zero, two, one, two, and three, Right? If packet number one was lost, in go back end, you have to ask to send again one, two, three. Right? Because you only accept the packets in the sequence. Right? Remember earlier? Right? You send one, two, three. If first packet was lost, you will not accept the remaining packets. And the sender has to repeat, send, resend all three again. Right? So in selective repeat, we can, allow, we can select and say, okay, so send me this particular packet, the only one, the one which was lost. Right? Other packets I already, already received. Right? So, the, so that's the difference between this and the previous one. So now in this case, acknowledgement number has a slight different function now. The acknowledgement number actually says that which which sequence number the, the packet is, has been received correctly, right? In go back and the sequence number, acknowledgement number is a cumulative. 
it says whatever packets before that has been received correctly. In selective repeat, the packet number, the acknowledgement number indicates the actual packet which was received correctly. Right? So selective repeat also allows packets to be received uh, not in order. Right? We'll see that later. And so in this case, the, the, the acknowledgement number is not accumulative. Right? It's only one number, it's not accumulative like the go back n just now. All right, so now our, 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 our windows has to be slightly different. So in this case, from the sender side, there's a sliding window. Now the sliding window on the receiver side is increased in size, right? Earlier was only one, one position, can only accept one, the receiver can only accept, the receiver can only accept one packet at a time, the, so the receiver window, receiver window is only size one, but now it is, the size is much more than one, right? That means it can accept, it can receive multiple packets at the same time. That's why it says. And we can indicate which is to be received, which is not received, and they may not be received in order, it's okay to also. All right, so on the sender side, it's basically the same, similar thing, right? So the size is now, the slide is smaller, it's 2 to the power of m minus 1. Earlier, GPN is 2 to the power m, then minus 1. So anyway, slight difference. Otherwise, it's the same thing, right? So we have the sliding window. We say which are, which are the packets we sent out, which are the packets next can be sent. But now, for the packets which have been sent out, there, there's a difference. Which has been acknowledged, which has not been acknowledged, and this has been acknowledged, but it's acknowledged not in the right order. Right? Earlier, the, everything must be, must be acknowledged in the correct order. Now, the receiver can acknowledge packets not necessarily in the correct order. Right? We'll see this later. Receive window. Now the receive window size is large. large so it allows as many packets as the, as the size of receive window to arrive out of order. So packet, we're expecting packet number three, next one. But packet number four arrives, fine, we will accept it. We will mark it that this packet has been received, has been received, but it is not in order, right? Packet number six arrives, fine. Packet number nine arrives, as long as the window, fine. But we cannot move the wind, we cannot move the window until the beginning. From the beginning, the packet has been acknowledged, right? So this this packet has not been acknowledged, so we cannot move position to right. If packet three arrives, then we can we can jump two position. Three and four has been accepted, okay, we can move two positions to the right, right? So now the receive window allows packets to arrive out of order and it will be stored and delivered later to the application, right? So that's the difference, right? So again, the same, same example we use. So now our window size on the, our, our receiver's window size is now increased, so it is four, this is also four. Normally, this should be the same, right? Because the sender can send, if sender can send out four packets at one time, the receiver must be able to receive four packets at the same time, right? So the, the two windows normally are synchronized. All right, so okay, let's, see, let's start. So the sender sends packet number one, uh, packet number zero, the, is expecting, so packet number zero is in the sliding window, all right? So since it's the first, so this packet since it's at the beginning, so this packet has been received correctly, we can acknowledge it. So now acknowledgement is zero, indicate that packet number zero has been received, right? So now the, receive, the sliding window on the receiver can shift one position to the right, okay? So now we're expecting packet number one, two, three, four. Any one of these received, we are okay. All right, so now the sender sends quickly packet, number, packet one, two, second, send packet one and two quickly, All right? So packet one was lost, packet two arrives, the receiver checks, it's number two in the sliding window. Yes, packet two is now in the sliding window, so I mark it. Packet two has been received, but it's not in order, All right? Fine, I will not move my window. I cannot move my window because the beginning of the 
sliding window is not confirmed yet. Right? And I send, and I send acknowledgement, say, packet 2 has been received. All right? So once the receiver, uh, sorry, the sender gets acknowledgement 2, it will mark, all right? Packet number 2 has been received correctly. But no news on packet 1 yet, right? Fine. Next, I can send out packet number 3, right? Send packet number 3. So packet number 3 is outstanding. So packet number 1 and packet number 3 is outstanding. Packet number 3 arrives. Packet number 3 is in the list, in the sliding window of receiver. So again, it marks it as received, but out of order, and acknowledge packet number three. So packet number three is now from blue, it becomes outstanding has been, from outstanding, it has been acknowledged. Right? So after waiting so, so long, acknowledgement for packet number one did not arrive. So the timer will expire. So timer for packet one expire means it will resend the packet number one again. Because in the sliding window, packet number two and three has been sent out and received, acknowledged. Packet number one was sent out, but no acknowledgement yet, right? So after time expire, it's resend packet number one. The, the receiver will look, packet number one, is it in the window list? Yes, it is window. It's in the sliding window, all right? Fine. Now it's acknowledged, and I acknowledge packet number one. So once packet number one is received, so one, two, and three has been acknowledged, right? So now I can clear three positions. I can shift three positions to the right. Because the first three, packet number one, two, and three in sequence has been arrived and has been acknowledged. So these packets can be delivered to the application. Right? So once, once the packet number one acknowledgement arrives, so again, packet number one, two, and three has been sent and has been acknowledged. Therefore, the senders, senders Sliding window now can jump three positions to the right. right. And it's ready to send packet number four now. And the receiver is receive it, rece ready to receive packet number four and so on. Right. So the acknowledgement here, the basic difference is that acknowledgement indicates which packet is the one which was received. Right. And the sliding window on the receiver side is now larger. You can accept packets which arrive out of sequence, right? And then, and then it will indicate accordingly to the sender, right? So that's the difference. Again, same, same things. Window size, again, has to be, has to be appropriate, right? If so the window size is correct, then you get it this way. So again, same thing if you send, again, same, same, same example, if the two acknowledgements were lost, after time expires, uh, both, both packets are outstanding, so therefore, after time expires, the sender will resend packet number zero, and uh, packet number zero is not in the list, it's not in the sliding window, therefore, it will be discarded, and which is correct, because the packet number zero was earlier received correctly. Right? It's okay. But if the sliding window is slightly larger than normal, then you have the same problem. Right? The packet number you received, you set, which was resent, is the packet which is in the next sequence and not the previous one. Right? So this shouldn't happen. So it's, it's the same principle as the previous example. Right? Now finally is that the piggybacking. Right? Piggybacking basically means that you can send and receive. I can send you data and you can send me data. Right? When, I, when I send my data, I also acknowledge, I also make acknowledgement at the same time. Right? So I piggyback. I make use of the same, same packet. Which, so I use one packet to send you data, but in the same packet, I also give you my acknowledgments, which, I, which, I, which are acknowledgments for the packets which you send me earlier. All right? So packets carrying data can also carry acknowledgment for received data. Right? So piggybacking, you know piggybacking, right? Like something, someone carrying someone. Right? Or gor gorilla carrying its, 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 its child. Right? You know this one, right? The space shuttle being carried by the, by the plane, right? Okay, so this is full duplex, bidirectional full duplex, right? Because I can send and receive data and acknowledgements at the same time in both ways, right? So this, so now both sides must have sliding 
windows for receiving and sending on both client and the receiver side. All right, so now that means we use same channel, right? So our, our packet will look like something like this. It has a sequence number for the data you are sending, right? And also acknowledgement number inside there. Acknowledgement numbers will be for the packets which it, it has received. Acknowledgements, right? So when sending data this way, so when uh, between from a client we're sending data this way, then the, the, the window size, the client side will have a large window. Same thing, we use the same principle, right? Sending first one until the until outstanding and then uh, waiting for the packets to be acknowledged. And then on the receiver side will be to receive the next packet to be received, right? And then when we send from this side to this side, then our window, uh, our sliding window, they have, they will use the, the sender's sliding window, which is again similar to this, and then the receiver will be this way. So now we, we are incorporating both of this at the same time, right? But we are sharing the same packet. Earlier, if you remember, earlier we are using two different packets, one for data packets, and another one is for acknowledgement, two separate ones, right? They do not mix. So if it's piggybacking, then we are mixing the two together at the same time. Right? So it's slightly more complex. So no example here because the example will be used in the TCP when we look at it later. Right? The one uses piggybacking a lot. Okay? Right, so I think that's it for today. <laughs>